good morning from the capital of Moldova, Chisinau. What I'm going to do, this is my first, uh, first day in uh, Moldova. And what we are going to do, we are going to the Republic of Transnistria. And the Republic of Transnistria is an um, autonomous republic, also independent, but it's not internationally recognized. For instance, what, what you have in this republic is that you have the Russian army there. So it's not part of Moldova at all. This is Transnistria where 1,300 Russian peacekeepers are already stationed. The situation in Transnistria, the breakaway region of Moldova, remains far from certain. Numerous attacks have been reported in the last few weeks. And I'm walking now on the, yeah, it's called the central market of Chisinau, the capital. And you also have the bus station in this area. So let's find a bus and yeah, hopefully we can uh, go to the capital of uh, Transnistria and the capital is called Tiraspol. It's around one hour to uh, Tiraspol and yesterday I was in the bus from uh, Yassi, Romania to Moldova and a girl told me that um, it's quite dangerous to go to uh, this part of... Yeah, this part of uh, He's not very happy to this part of um, Transnistria because of the war in Ukraine. And when you are in Tiraspol, it's even possible to hear the bombs in uh, Ukraine because to Ukraine it's around, I think, 30 kilometers. And uh, from Tiraspol to Odessa, Odessa is the, um, the port city of Ukraine, it's around maybe one hour by car. Is this your UTVIS bus, Tiraspol? Tiraspol, Tom. Tom, thank you very much. Okay. So that was not the bus to uh, Tiraspol. But the people are, are also really friendly here. Um, you can ask them everything, they help you and they don't want something from you so that's also uh, yeah, really good because in a lot of countries when you ask people for something they want money or they want something but here the people are just willing to help you, willing to help the tourists and it's also not touristy at all here uh, in the hostel I saw some people from Ukraine one American and one Australian tourist. So at the moment there are a lot of uh, Ukrainian refugees because of course it's uh, bordering with Ukraine. Uh, so this is a really easy, easy place for refugees, refugees to go to, to flee the war. So this is the same public transport as in uh, Georgia and a lot of other uh, countries of course. But those buses you call Mashrutka. And Mashrut cars are just like small buses which don't really have a timetable. So they wait till the bus is full and then the bus is uh, going to the, uh, to the destination. After one hour, we finally arrived in Tiraspol, the capital city of um, Transnistria. And the Russian people here call Transnistri Transnistria Pridnistrovia. Pridnistrovia. So that, that's the Russian name here. And um, yeah, the reason it also has a Russian name is that a lot of Russian people live in this area. It's the same in Ukraine with uh, Donetsk and uh, Kharkiv. Um, so that's the reason um, everything is also written in Russian here. Uh, in the schools, for instance, it's the, the normal Latin alphabet is banned there uh, by the state. They only teach like the Cyrillic alphabet. And it's also not possible to learn like Latin or Romanian written in the Latin alphabet in schools. It's only allowed to uh, teach Romanian or Russian uh, with the Cyrillic alphabet. 
uh, because this is a sort of autom autonomous Russian uh, region uh, like Crimea, Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Um, so here you can see the different cities in Transnistria. For instance, uh, Grigoriopol and uh, Slobodzea i Dniestrovsk. And here you can also see the flag of Transnistria. You can't see it right now, but it has the hammer and the sickle, so the communist sign. And besides the flag of Transnistria, you see the Russian flag, uh, because this is a pro-Russian region. So a lot of people who live here also yeah, support the Russian government. Uh, but I just met uh, Anastasia, but she doesn't like to be uh, on video. Um, but we were talking about, uh, about the war, uh, and what she is doing here and she was um, you were you born here Vrasia i Pitnistrovsk like baby you Vrasia no Tiraspol ah okay okay so Anastasia was born in Tiraspol uh, but she now lives in Moscow uh, and she works there as a web designer. But she said about this place that it's a qu yeah, quite a poor area. But she is here till I think July because of her family. Because her family still lives here. Her family also lives in Odessa in Ukraine. So part of her family. And uh, yeah, unfortunately um, yeah, a, lot, a lot of parts in Odessa are bombed uh, yeah, by the Russians. So that's also the reason that she told me uh, that she doesn't like the war um, and that a lot of people in Russia don't like the war. But that it's not possible to talk about it in Russia. Yeah, if you think that a lot of Russians support the Russian government, that's not true. A lot of Russians don't support uh, the war in Ukraine, but they can't. Uh, can't talk about it because otherwise they are yeah they are going to be sent to prison or to uh, gulag. So yeah, let's explore uh, Pit Prit oh Pritnistrovia. It's a really difficult name Pritnistrovia. So I just changed some uh, Moldovan money to um, yeah Transnistrian ruble. So they have their own currency in uh, Transnistria. And a couple of years ago, uh, the coins were made of plastic because it was so basic. But now they improved and now they have a real yeah, currency. But they call it ruble, ruble uh, be because they want to um, yeah, be Russian, of course. Uh, so that's the reason uh, I had to change some money. So from Romania to Moldova, I had to change money. And now again to this um, yeah, little republic. Uh, but as I already said, this republic is not internationally recognized. So um, the banking system is also not connected to the international banking system. So when you are going to visit an autonomous region like Transnistria, then you have to bring cash because European bank cards won't work in uh, those regions. Uh, can you cut my hair? Hmm? Oh, uh, how? Um, photo? It's a really Soviet looking uh, barber shop here. Okay, she doesn't like to be filmed, but uh, for this time it was okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nie journalist. <laughs> Solo. Ah, uh, uh, sure, da, 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 da. Oh, cuckoo? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 
Е, американски. Ти, ти любиш? А. Да, ми е все равно. Ага. Ми е все равно, я равно. Ти любиш Молдава или Русия? Я люблю людей. Люди. 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 Мне все равно, молдаван или русский, или американский, мне все равно. А -а -а. Я люблю, чтобы мир был, дружба, все, чтобы было дружба. хорошо. А остальное мне... Вот это вот, я все равно, мне все а -а -а. равно. Не проблема. Нет. Разделения никакого нет. А -а -а. То есть разделение людей, хорошее, плохо, плохо хорошо, хорошо, нет. Я, да. я всех. Да. Люди все должны жить мирно. Из Голландии? Я из Голландии. А, да. из Голландии. А ты? Отсюда, здесь. А, Тираспол. Тираспол, да. Тираспол. И у тебя есть паспорт э, Петнистровье? Петнистровье, а. есть. Да, я же здесь живу. А, и тоже, тоже молдавский? И молдавский есть. И румынский? Нет. Румынский нет. И российский? Есть. Да? Да. А, три? Три. Три паспорта. <laughs> Украинский? Нет. 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 А. Хотя я украинка. Украинка? Да. А. По национальности. А. Нация украинка. А. Но живу здесь всю жизнь. С детства живу здесь. Выросла и тут вот. А, окей. Дети? Дети есть. Дети? Два. В Украине? Нет. В Болгарке. Болгарке? Да. София? Муж Болгарии. Муж? Муж. Папа. Папа. А, папа. Папа Болгарии. Папа Болгарии и мама? Украинка. Украинка. Дети Болгарки. А, дети Болгарки. Да. Критмистровский стайл. Стайл. Ты знаешь? Стиль. 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 Стиль у всех одинаковый. 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 Да. That's so difficult to talk with people in another language. But you have to know a bit of a language to communicate, but yeah, it's, so, it's really difficult. So when you go to a country, really learn a bit of the language because otherwise so in the camera говоришь в камера да 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 в камера спасибо очень спасибо и до свидания до свидания заходите походите еще заходите еще хаш еще следующий раз. Да, следующий раз. А следующий раз. Да, да. Бай-бай, пока. Пока. До свидания. Back from the barber. The women did quite a good job, I think. It's um, yeah, shorter than it was, but uh, it's fresh. Um, so we are ready to uh, explore some more sites of uh, Tiraspol. It looks like it's going to rain, but it's quite warm, I think 22 degrees. But what I'm going to do now is yeah, visit the Lenin statue. Because Transnistria, so Pritistrovia in Russian, is still yeah, a communist nation. And yeah, they have a giant statue of Lenin down here. And there's also a monopoly on a lot of things like uh, fuel stations, uh, supermarkets, uh, the telecom provider. They have all the same name. The name of those, um, those companies is Sheriff. And I read on the internet, but I don't know if it's true, of course, that the son of the president is the owner of all those companies. Um, and that's what you see that's also what you saw in the Sofia times in Russia is that um, all the friends and family of the president of the politicians get the companies uh, so they call it a monopoly but in the end there's a small group 
of communists who own all the companies. And here we have a big building. I don't know what it is. Maybe the parliament building with two flags on the roof. The flag of Britney Strovia, so Transnistria, and the flag of Russia, the ally of this uh, small nation. And in front, we have the giant statue of Lenin. So here behind me, you see the statue of Lenin. And of course, Lenin is one of the founding fathers or the, uh, the people who used communism uh, as a tool to rule the to rule a country, uh, the Soviet Union. So I think this is their hero in this place, because otherwise you wouldn't build a statue like this in front of your uh, government building. Uh, hopefully they don't have a KGB here, because otherwise, uh, yeah, this wouldn't be allowed. Because in in Russia it wasn't allowed, and in some former Soviet nations like Belarus. It's not allowed to film a government building, but then it's already too late. But yeah, it's huge. So yeah, really interesting. I didn't see any like Stalin statues because in Gori, uh, in uh, Georgia, that's the place where Stalin was born. And there they had a lot of like Stalin statues. But yeah, here they only like Lenin maybe, because Stalin was uh, the crazy partner in crime of Lenin. They still use like really old buses in, uh, in Pridnistrovje. It really feels like you, yeah, travel back in time because I think, yeah, you don't see modern buildings in this country in the capital but most of the times the capital city is the most modern part of a country and here you don't see like anything modern so uh, all the buildings were i think built uh, during the soviet times so maybe 40 30 years ago um, but what we didn't try is a good pridnistrovian beer uh, what I know is that they uh, make cognac in this country. It's called Kvint. Um, so maybe we can try that. Or some good Pridnistrovian or Ukrainian, Russian or Moldovan uh, beer. But this is how people live here. In like uh, apartments, uh, flats. And of course you also have houses here. Uh, but most of the times you uh, you will find houses on the countryside and when it's in a capital city the rich people live in the big houses and the normal people they uh, they live in uh, flats in uh, former soviet uh, countries but there's literally no one walking on the street there's some cars but it's quite dead i don't know maybe it's the time of the day it's around three o'clock at the moment but um, yeah, it feels like a small village but it's the capital of Transnistria oh but here you have the the bigger houses so this is I think a more um, yeah, richer uh, neighborhood uh, Yeah, so arrived at a restaurant, but it is not really, uh, <laughs> this is really luxurious. So you have like the yeah, more poor side in, uh, in this uh, area and also the more luxury, uh, luxury clubs and restaurants. Hello. What do I have to drink? Um, yeah, can I, do you have uh, like a Britney Strovian uh, Piva? Yeah, like Britney local beer? Yeah, local beer, yeah. One glass, yeah. Uh, yeah, one glass, please, yeah. So this is the Moldovan beer and some extra alcoholic drink uh, which I uh, received as, an, uh, as a gift. So let's try the Moldovan beer. Oh sorry, the Pidnistrovian beer. Mm, yeah, I'm not the best beer taster but 
It tastes quite good. But the menu is so cheap. 160 ruble is 10 euros. So that means that this dish costs around 2 euros and 30 cents. This one maybe 8 euros. The pizza is around yeah, 6 euros. Really cheap. So if you want good prices then Moldova in general and Transnistria is also a good choice. But let's try this, uh, this drink. It smells like broccoli. Really strange. What kind of drink is this? This smells like vegetable. This smells like broccoli. You know broccoli? It's not broccoli, I know of course. This is like... Uh, now I would translate it, I don't know in Korean. Uh, you know. It's uh, but it's vegetable, right? Like greens. Uh, this is like Ukrainian uh, hard alcohol. Like uh, homemade. Homemade, yeah. ah, okay. You have to short it? Yeah, yeah Okay. Yes. Ten minutes later, I really can't decide what I'm going to take, but they brought some gazpacho. Spanish soup. Also really good. Back in rainy Kishinev, Moldova. It was a really interesting day in Transnistria and Tiraspol. So if you are in Moldova, Romania or Ukraine, definitely visit that country. It's it's worth it. It's really cheap there and the transport to uh, Transnistria is also really cheap. See you in a new video, in a new adventure. I'm going back to the hostel.